Hello, this is Tom Clements and Zach Cleaver with King Air Academy. We're sitting in the cockpit today of a BE-136, which is a 1982 King Air B-100. The next to last one built, matter of fact. And uh, what we're going to be doing is trying to videotape a full initial checkout, going through all of the King Air Academy checklist procedures, both on the ground, internal, pre-flight, external, in-flight actions. You're going to see it all. So I uh, want to clarify one thing is when we're doing training like this and someone's new to the airplane, the checklist has to be used as a do list. We're, we're reading each step and then doing it and then going the next one. Very laborious, very slow. Hey, we don't want that to be the way you eventually do it once you know what you're doing. Then just use your flow patterns, go through it, and use the checklist to make sure you didn't forget anything. So forgive us now, but, but as we get new to this, we have to do the checklist as a do list. So we're going to begin with the interior pre-flight. And I'll be the checklist reader and Zach will be the responder. So Zach, first step is control locks. They are removed. Right sidewall circuit breakers. They are checked. Oxygen pressure. 1,700 pounds. Uh, <coughs> Co-pilots, or pilots, I'm sorry, pilots static air source. Is normal. Co-pilots right and left sub-panel circuit breakers. All look good to me. Cabin temp mode selector. Is off. Vent blower switch. Auto. Bleed air valve switches. Environmental off. Coffee bar switch. Off. Aileron and rudder trim wheels. Zero, zero. Cabin pressure switch. Pressure position. Pedestal circuit breakers. Reset. All right. <clears throat> Landing gear manual extension handles. Both are secured. Landing gear handle. Down. Landing gear relay circuit breaker. In. Prop sync switch. Is on. And this does have the type 2 prop sync on the later V100s, which can be left on at all times. Pilots right and left sub panel switches off. Off. Now we've worked our way, as you can see, on a flow pattern from right to left across the cockpit. And that gets us over to the fuel panel. And now we're starting a pretty extensive fuel panel check that begins with checking the hot wired items right to the battery. So first thing is fuel firewall valves. So left open or closed. And I barely could hear that right one move. Fuel system circuit breakers. Are all in. Standby pumps on and listen. Left one's running. Right one's running. Right, now the battery switch. Now we're hearing the boost pumps running, but now we're looking at the Nessier panel to verify we have fuel pressure lights on both sides. Now this says we have less than 10 PSI of pressure in the system and yet the pumps are running. So that's the verification that the fuel firewall shutoff valves are tightly closed, not letting the fuel leak past. So the next step is fuel firewall valve switches. Left is open, light, light one out. out. Right open, light one out. Now we're going to turn the left standby pump off. Off. And we should lose pressure. Now we're going to check the cross feed, see if the right pump can come across and extinguish that pressure light. So cross feed switch. Cross feed's open, light one out, cross feed light on. Cross feed switch. Closed. A comment here is the cross feed light indicates the valve is getting power, but it's not saying whether it's truly open. So it's very important to check that the fuel pressure light did extinguish on the opposite side to know that yes, the valve did open and that pressure can move across. Uh, right standby pump. Off. Aux transfer switches on. And left is on. And right is Aux on. empty lights press to test and left already on. They both test. 
And the reason we turned the switches on was to get power for those lights. If the switches are off, there's no power. So the next step is aux transfer switches back to off. And lastly, check there is fuel quantity. Check both main and aux. Looks like we got up a thousand pounds in each main. Left aux is showing about 250, right is showing 400. Good. And by the way, uh, viewers, you can tell why old Kingers have short fingers, because you have to tap so much on the gauges when <laughs> they stick a little bit. Now we're going to continue back across the panel one more time to do some things that we couldn't do without the battery switch on before. Next is landing gear handle lights. And notice there are lights both top and bottom, and it's notorious that the bottom bulb gets loose, falls down the carpet, gets lost. So make sure you're, you're ever so often making sure that's tightly in. <clears throat> Landing gear handle safety latch. It's visually confirming that it is locking over, locking over the handle. Fire detectors. So we have our test switch here. We're going to look for fire lights in all three Left positions. Right. Left right. Actually, did we get a light on the right side of number one? Yes. No, we didn't. No, we did not. So that's why you're on your checks occasionally, but that'll have to be looked into to see why we're not getting a fire light on detector number one. Should indicate there's no continuity to that number one detector on the right side. Um, <clears throat> avionics lights tested. So the um, later model B200s have the three row enunciator that you're looking at now. The earlier ones had the same lights but in only two longer rows. And a couple are out here and there. I'm not sure what those are, but I think they're simply where some spare bulbs were installed. And there's an example of probably the left bulb in that left turn out light is, is probably out. Should be replaced uh, at the convenience. Uh, avionics enunciators brightness set. And with the update to the 750, that may no longer apply. I don't think it does. One of the standard King Airs will have an avionics brightness dim knob on the panel somewhere. So for daytime flying, you can set it bright, nighttime set it dim. Now we go up the overhead panel and make sure it's off for daytime flying and That's as off. you want it for nighttime flying. Off. And notice what Zach did. These two switches do not get wired through the master. All these do. So it's okay to leave these on full bright for when you use them next time. But you definitely want to get these two off. Uh, DC voltmeters. At least 22 volts. And if we have no voltage on one side, we may have a current limiter out on that side. And 22. They check on both sides. Okay. Now, folks, we have two batteries in the B100. And now they're hooked up in, in parallel. And if one battery is stronger than the other, you'd see that higher voltage. So... Typically both will be about the same, but we're looking at the combination of both batteries now. Main and standby pitch trim. Now that check is so lengthy, it has its own page devoted to it. And it is a long check, but checks everything out. Remember the B100s, all the 100 series actually, do not have an elevator trim wheel because we don't do the trimming by moving trim tabs in the elevator. Instead we move the whole horizontal stabilizer with electric motor. So here we go. Check is main pitch trim master goes off. Oh. Standby pitch trim master comes on. Standby trim switches individually switches check and there should be no action. Now the standby trim is pretty slow so hold that at least three or four seconds to make sure you don't hear any motor running. Now, both switches together go forward, and we should hear something running. And keep going. We should hear the beep beep tone also. There it is. Now go back. 
And the reason I had you go back second is take your little finger now, if we well, heard the beeping, and turn it off. Make sure it stops the trim. And I'll say right now, uh, viewers, that everything on the standby trim system is here. Nothing's on the control yokes. That's all for the main. So if we ever had a, a malfunction standby, you turn it off right here. You can't stop it up on the control yoke. We're never supposed to have both systems on at the same time. That would not hurt anything. There's a clutch, and the main is stronger in standby, so you won't damage anything if that happens. But the concern is if a problem occurs, you don't know which system is giving you trouble. You don't know which one to turn off, which one to turn on. So that's why separately. Okay, next step is main pitch trim master back on. Now we come up the control wheel, and pilots switches up and down individually. Again, no action if we just use half the switch. Now the main trim is about three times faster than the standbys, so we don't have to hold the switch quite as long as we did before. Okay, now both pilot switches, nose down direction, we're going to verify we hear the trim, see the indicator move, hear the beep beep beeps, okay? and um, as it's running, Zach's going to take his right hand and push the red disconnect button down and see if that stops the trim. Now when we release it, the trim should run again. First part of the day, we're going to go full extreme, so all the way nose down. And stop by itself. Yep, that's about four and a half degrees nose down. Now, <clears throat> we're going to start in the nose up direction, and again check if the red button stops it in that direction also. go for a moment. I want to mention to the viewers uh, something I know a lot of you watching this have previous experience in other Kinger models. 200s, 300s, a lot of the C90s, E90s, etc. The trim is totally different as we know. And based on those airplanes, a single shot all the way down to the red button will disconnect the trim, turn it off, and you'd have to cycle the trim switch off and on to get it back. That is not the case in B100s. If you had a trim runaway, and push the button down, the trim stops if the button's held down. If you release the button, it runs again. So very different, potentially dangerous there. So make sure you hold that button down until you can kill the main trim switch here on the pedestal. Now in just a moment, <clears throat> we're going to continue that up direction. And the left power lever, only the left side, triggers a takeoff out of trim warning. This is such a strong trim system that they want pilots to know if it's not set for takeoff. And for takeoff, we need to be in the green arc from zero to two degrees nose up. So what we're going to do is run this left power lever forward, listen to the takeoff out of trim warning, which, by the way, is the gear horn warning. And then as Zach passes through that green arc, the horn should go away. And as he comes out the backside of the green arc, the horn should blow again. In the green arc, out of the green arc. And first fly of the day is going to go full extreme up. All right, now run it just forward enough to get it off the stop. Deck. That's good. Okay, now we're basically going to do the same thing on the co-pilot side. So individual switches, one forward, one back, nothing. The inboard forward, back. Nothing. I'm going to go forward, see if my red button stops it while depressed, and lets it go while released. Now, <clears throat> if one pilot's trimming one way and another trims the other, it basically cancels out. There again, many other King Airs, the pilot has override, but not here. So as I go forward, Zach, come back up and let's see if it stops. Go up. There we go. Alright. Now, I'm going to do it the other direction, up, and again, see if you go down, it stops. And it does. All right. So that's all the trim check, except setting it to zero for the external walk around as an accuracy check. So sad but true, this is notoriously kind of sticky, as you see there. So do a little tapping. Just go forward another half. Good. So we're going to leave it real close to zero. 
for the outside check to come. All right, back to first page. So we did the trim checks, which you saw is quite lengthy. Next, battery switch off. Last check, cockpit and cabin condition. So do you have the newspapers? Do you have the ice in the cabinets? Do you have your charts you're going to need or your four flight, etc.? And the very last step on this checklist is as we exit towards the door, we're going to check the emergency exit is secured and unlocked. Unlocked so in case we had a rescuer need to come in from outside, they could enter the airplane. The last step on the interior pre-flight checklist as we do it walking back towards the door to go outside is to verify the emergency exit is secured and unlocked. The exit here has a key slot and the same key that works the cabin door goes into this slot and if it's turned from vertical to horizontal it locks the outside handle so thieves could not get in from outside so depending on the security ramp you may or may not want to use that most people don't use it very much but for flight we want to make sure the rescuers could come in so we verify that that slot is vertical it's not in locked position now you people with the King or 90 experience, your emergency exit was, was the third window back on the right side, not the first. And as you know, it opened outward, it hinged at the bottom. If someone opens that for, for demonstration purposes, it's not a very good idea because usually it's difficult to get that to reclose and seal properly the next time. On the other hand, this exit is a plug type of exit, slightly bigger than the opening it goes into. So the more pressurized we are, the more it's pushed out, the better the seal seals. So not that we open this very often, but if a mechanic was working in the cabin and hot day, wanted more circulation, that'd be a time to, to open this thing. And uh, typically we'll just crack it a little bit and I'll take it totally out. So Zach, why don't you pull the red handle? And let's bring this in three or four inches. And as you see, quite easy. There it is. Uh, the seal is up here, which uh, goes against the, the frame of the airplane. If we took this all the way out, <coughs> we'd have a, a, a wire going to the reading light here. It'd have to be reconnected. There's a quick disconnect on that here at the lower corner. So it makes it a little bit of a hassle to take it all the way out and set it aside. But certainly that could be done and would be done for emergency egress. So now let's close that back up. And we'll find that there's a little problem the newcomers come across. Namely, if you close the door all the way, you can't lock the handle. So there's a point here about an inch open where that works as a nice little lever engaging the latches to push it right back in. So make sure you don't go too far. Keep playing with that handle and rotate it so it just goes in the rest of the way. There's the emergency exit on the B100.